In the shop today doing a little bit of fabrication. I'm breaking out a saw, a saw that I get a lot of questions about. People want to know how this saw has held up and if it really is good value. So here it is guys. I'm going to do like a quick two year review on this um, and what I think about it and how it's worked for me and if I think it's good for you guys. So here's the short answer. Um, go buy it. <laughs> if you need a saw, you need like the Portaband style saw, go get this guy and I'm going to tell you why. It offers a couple other things that uh, that like having a porta band set up doesn't right so obviously the one thing it doesn't have is you can't take this out to the field and cut something with it right um, this is this is corded and uh, you're not going to run an extension cord to it and hold this and cut a piece of pipe it's just not going to happen you're going to have to put the pipe in the vise vise is fantastic it's a nice heavy cast vise um, usually the vices are like underbuilt on this kind of stuff this thing is for for what you're using this for i'm gonna say it's over adequate like it's overbuilt it works really really well um okay so there's one you get to cut things which the porta band can't do this you get to cut straight angles perfect or you can come down in here and you got little ratchets loosen it up and give it a little swing right so that'll swing left and right we'll lock it again one thing I don't like is their frame lock, right? So you can carry it around like this in the locked position and you just grab the saw anywhere you want. I usually just grab it by the handle actually. So it's been set to about three quarter and that's kind of by accident. I mean, it's probably better if it runs high, but it, it has no problem cutting. Um, I did, I was gonna rewire this two years ago and, and like just couple the wires inside there. I just kept the switch on and then I used this as my on off switch. What makes this so special is really quickly you can knock out one of these and this just slides in there, drops in place, and watch it self-center. Bam, she's done. That easy. And now you have a nice big table. So give you an idea of the size, that's a fireball tool square. So you have plenty of room to get in anywhere you want for a cut. So of course. If you're doing thick material, it will hit back here. But this is a small saw, you know? Uh, but it does, <laughs> I haven't really fit much in there that I can't cut. You know, this table was made on this saw, so pretty cool. So she's got a lot of power, but what I want to do is there's some wear items in these. Um, so we're just going to pop the side covers off and um, kind of look at what the wheels in here look like. So the wear items are going to be like your bearings down in here and up in here. It does have them on both sides. And the cool thing is, is this is completely adjustable. So you can loosen that and slide this up and down. And then also um, there's going to be like a some form of rubber on the wheels inside here. So we're just going to take this guard off real quick. We're going to pop a couple screws out and take a look inside and see what it looks like inside. Another thing I don't like is this screw down here. You have to have a stubby screwdriver to get it off, but you know, the top one's super, super simple, super easy. So let me get a stubby. This is a pretty cool little tool made by Gear Wrench. Um, you can unlock it and then whoop, put it into any position you want. Now, body technicians that work around fenders understand how important something like this is because you got to get up in the fender to remove uh, screws and bolts. And um, this will fit kind of. Ooh, pretty much anything. So it's a ratchet that works with any of your hex bits. Really cool. I don't know if I can find a link to this, guys, but I'll put it in there if I can. Um, something I use all the time. All right, let's see what's in here. Let's see how horrible this is. Woo-woo. Okay, I'm going to set up a light, and uh, we're going to look a little closer. Okay. Alright, so yeah, we got a little bit of trash on the wheel. Let's see. Yep. That's about it. It's going to pick up some stuff, you know. You can see right there where it cleaned off. But, look at that. Plenty of uh, rubber left. That looks like what it looked like when it was originally made. Of course, the wheels themselves are aluminum, and these are CNC machined. And, look like they're doing good. So, yeah, no worries on the rubber. And easy to replace if there was an issue with it, but nothing, man. I mean, you can kind of see, let's see if I can get you. Okay. That's what we want to see. You can see that the rubber is not wearing off. That's the track where the blade goes. And I'm um, actually with the micro view, that blade still looks pretty darn sharp. 
Well, that's fantastic. That's what I wanted to see, uh, make sure that everything was good. I'm just doing a little maintenance on this guy and just cleaning her up. I mean, she's she's well used, guys. I've put a lot of time on this. I've never had to mess with the adjuster. It's locked in place pretty darn good. Easy to adjust if I needed to. Um, but yeah, I think she's good to go. Let's check the uh, kind of the followers. Okay, I can see right here it looks like our, um, this should have like a little bit of, I think a little bit of, um, like some kind of a, protectant in there and you can see this one kind of bent over a little bit and that's more probably due to me hitting it with something um can't imagine that's from anything else not that these are that important this is just a sweep that's going to clean the belt as it goes down and as long as that sweeps in the saw goes this direction we're okay so i don't even care about this one grabbing the bearings giving them a little twist we've got no play no rotational play in them at all i don't feel like i'm ready to change that blade yet either for those of you wondering, 3-inch by 4-inch bench top metal cutting bandsaw item number uh, is 4946. The motor is 120, 60 hertz, obviously. 3 quarter horsepower, and it draws 8.4 amps. I don't have like an amp meter to test that, um, so we'll just assume that it's close. And uh, cutting capacity, 3.5 inch diameter, or 3.5 inch by 4.5 inch. So it will cut up to 4.5 inch material, and I do it all day long. So I really like the Swag Off-Road Portaband setup. If you've already got a Portaband, definitely jump on that train. If you need a Portaband, portable bandsaw cutting out in the field, get that setup. I think it's a really good setup. But if you're just working in a shop, I think this is a much better setup, because for the shop life, you get a little more versatility. You have... Uh, you can use it as like a chop saw, you know, you can just cut your material to whatever length you like. You can also cut miters, it works great for that. And then all you do is flip it up and you've got that nice wide table. That saw is definitely as important to me for fabrication as my welder. I mean, it really is. I, I, I uh, have learned to love it. When I originally released the video, a lot of guys went out and bought it. So for you guys that have bought it, go ahead and leave comments in the description about what you think about it. And guys, if you have any questions at all, by all means, comment and let me know what you think. If you have questions that I haven't um, answered for you on this video, definitely put them in the comment section. And then all the guys out there with the Swag Off-Road with the like Milwaukee Portaban or DeWalt Portaban or Harbor Freight Portaban, um, go ahead and get in the description right now and talk about your experiences with those and uh, what you think are the, the, the biggest benefits and the biggest um, negative aspects of that particular setup. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you coming by and I'll put a link in the description where you guys can pick one of these up or just go check them out if you like.